Hey, I'm Matt Shade Tech. I'm a producer and DJ based in Brooklyn, New York. I'm also the course designer for the Logic program at DubSpot and DubSpot Online. In this tutorial, we're gonna look at how to export stems out of Logic. And what stems are is an audio file containing each element of our track separately, including the silence which leads up to that element. So I've got this bass part here, which comes in at bar five. When I print a stem of this, I'm gonna get the bass by itself, including this four bars of silence here before it comes in. And what that's gonna allow us to do is, once I have all of my tracks in that format exported, I could take those audio files and drop them into any digital audio workstation like Ableton, Pro Tools, uh, whatever software you want to take your take your track into, whether you're going to mix it or remix it or, or whatever you're doing with it, you can just drop all those files in there on separate tracks, line them all up with the one, and you're going to be able to recreate your song. And you won't even have to set the the tempo to match because if they all start at the one and they all have the silence printed, they're all just going to line up automatically. So it can be really handy in that regard. Now, what are some situations where we would want to have stems? Probably the most common is if you're going to have a mix engineer mix down your track. And in that case, they're going to want you to print out each element separately so they can go in and uh, apply some effects and adjust the levels and so on. Also, if you're going to do a remix, it's very common to provide the stems to the remixer so that they can have each element separated and do their creative thing with it. Another use for stems is it's a great format to back stuff up in. Once your song is done, I've had tracks where... I you know, finished the song, did a, a stereo bounce, and then realized I wanted to go back and change something, and I opened it up, and one of the plugins isn't working, or some of the files are missing, and basically the song will be ruined. And if you have audio files, audio files are always a safe backup format, which you, know, you can open on any computer, and you don't need all the plugins. So a little tip there. I've got an example track that I've been working on for my past couple of videos. I created the uh, the drum pattern in here in my tracking audio off the MPC video and the noise sweep down here in my uh, in my last video. So if you're interested in those, you can go ahead and check those out on the DubSpot YouTube channel. I'll just play you a quick piece of this so you can get a vibe and then we'll uh, get into the tutorial. So there's a little little taste. And so there is one really important thing that I want to focus on for this, which is a kind of a tricky issue that I've run into and seen some people have some problems with printing stems out of Logic, which is the way that Logic handles auxiliary tracks in this process. The default is that your auxiliary tracks will not be printed as stems, which if you're like me and you use them a lot is really going to be a big problem. So I'm going to show you how to work around that. And so what is an auxiliary track? For example, here I have a snare. That's a little high snare that I was using to reinforce that one there. And as you can see, if we look at the channel strip over here, the only thing that I have on here is there's no reverb on the snare directly. I'm using a send here to bus four which has a reverb, a space designer in this case, on it. And so I'm just sending some of the audio to that space designer track to get my reverb going. Now, what I want is for those return tracks, like this here, bus four, to be printed as their own stems. So how do we do that? It's a two-step process. The first thing we're gonna do is right-click on the track and choose this 
create select arrange track. And I'm just right clicking in this little empty area next to the sends so that I don't click on any of the sends or anything like that. So create select arrange track. And then you see up here in the arrange this verb for PLT for plate reverb appears. And so now we have a track for it in the arrange so Logic can kind of see, okay, this is a track that we want to bounce. However, it's not done yet because Logic, if it doesn't see any regions, right, in the track, it's going to ignore it. Like I have all these rewired tracks that I'm not using and some empty audio tracks. And so it's going to ignore those, but it's also going to ignore my send because my send doesn't have any MIDI or audio data in it. So here's what we need to do to work around that. Pull up the pencil tool. I'm doing that by pressing escape. That's a little shortcut for you. And then just click with the pencil tool in the beginning of this track. What we've done is just created a blank region with nothing in it. But what that tells Logic is, hey, pay attention to this track. There's something here that we want to record. And now this track is going to get bounced as its own stem. So I'm not going to go through and do them all, but I have, you know, several six sends set up here. So normally I would do one for each. Um, I also have a, uh, a sub mix where I'm doing some side chaining on my, uh, on one of my synths here. And so I would actually make a, another track for that as well for bus 11 to bounce that sub mix as its own stem. So, now that we've got that set up, and that is the real kind of uh, thing that I see a lot of people get tripped up about is the way these sends are handled. They just will print their project and then the, the, the sends don't get, uh, or the return tracks don't get printed and then their mix is messed up. So watch out for that. Now, once we've got that, we're gonna go up here to File, Export, and choose All Tracks as Audio Files. It's, gonna, it's saying there are 20 tracks to be bounced. Now, if you look, right, I've actually got 37 tracks in the arrange, right? So you can see that it's ignoring some of them, the ones that don't have any information on them. So that's cool. Now, save format, you could do AIF or WAV. It doesn't really matter that much. The bit depth, I recommend doing 24-bit because we're going to be continuing to work with this audio. It's not a final bounce, right? So we want to preserve that bit depth. And 24-bit is going to give us a good uh, balance between quality and also compatibility with other systems. If you have multi-output software instruments, you can choose how you want them to be handled, whether you want them printed separately or together. Now, if you're doing a mix, if you're giving this to someone to mix, they may want you to give it to them without the plugins. Like if, if you want to take all your effects off and have them apply those effects, uh, you can choose this bypass effect plugins and that's going to turn everything off. Now, I don't want that in this case, so I'm going to leave that unchecked. I want to bounce it with my uh, effects on there and then add effect tail here. This in this case is automatically on, but what this will do is let's say you have a, a reverb or a delay that continues past the end of the song. Instead of just cutting it off, it's going to allow that to run out. Down here, include volume and pan automation. In this case, I'm going to keep this on because I want it to bounce everything at the levels that I have it set here in the mixer. If you turn this off, you're going to get everything at unity at zero, which is going to, you know, potentially um, change the balance of your mix, uh, which in this case I don't want. If I was giving it to a mixer, I might just zero everything out. But in this case, I'm going to keep this on. I'm basically treating this as if I was making a, a copy for a backup or a remix. And then normalize, my recommendation is off. This is another case where we can change the balance of our mix. Overload protection is just designed so that if something looks like it's gonna clip, it will prevent it from doing that and not change the other levels. And then if you turn it on, it's gonna try to turn everything up to zero and get the maximum volume out of everything. So this will completely change the balance of your mix. So I really don't recommend you use this. So I'm gonna go with off because I wanna preserve everything just as it is and I know that I don't have any clipping on my, uh, on my tracks. Add resulting files to audio bin just means that it's gonna add all the files that we create back into the same project. I don't wanna do that because I'm not gonna use these in the same project. Now, once you've got everything set properly, 
you can just go ahead and hit the save button here and it's going to start that process of printing out the stems. Now, this could take a little while depending on how many tracks you have. And it's also worth noting that it's going to take up a bunch of space on your hard drive. So just kind of be prepared for that. I'm going to cancel out because I don't need to do that right now. The other thing that I wanted to just mention here is that the file names are going to go based off of the track names. So it's worth going in here and giving things names that you can understand so that then when you're going through the stems, like here, these audio tracks here, I should rename if I'm going to do this. I named some of them, but not all of them. So you want to name things properly so that you don't have a bunch of files called audio four and stuff like that. So hopefully that's been helpful. If you want to learn more like this, you can check out our full 48 class logic course, which you can take either at our school in Manhattan or online. And that's at dubspot.com. And if you want to learn more about me and my music, you can check me out at mattshadetech.com. And uh, yeah, I hope this was helpful. And thanks very much for watching. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.